hi welcome so today this is another uh, good lesson so we are tackling something on photogrammetry i saw a good question on the neck 2014 november series so that's a long time ago but that's a good question in which we can tackle and see the best way on how to deal with such questions so this is a uh, uh, paper so welcome all let's go directly to the question so here these are the what that is what the last question on that series so we have a lot of question here and i've tried my best to make sure i've given you the right content uh for you uh, to pass through to revise and to do more research on so we'll just go directly to those questions so i will answer them individually so this is the so let's first with the start with the first question so state the overlap required for the stereoscopic pair of an aerial photograph so in aerial photographs uh, we have something under the uh, overlapping and uh, in overlapping so the overlaps we have them in two so we have the side lap and we have the end lap so we were only told to state so we'll just do that i've illustrated here with the diagram you can see so here we have the uh, two sides lap and then here we have the end laps so these are uh, overlaps that are taken um, using an aircraft uh, in the modern society we are using the drone technology so the overlaps uh, in any pair of uh, photos is called a stereo pair so remember that and these overlaps uh, it can uh, be successfully along the flight strip that is called the end lap and the amount of end lap is normally 60 percent so you make sure you remember that and then we have the uh, side lap as you can see that in the diagram so make sure you do more search on this uh, topic where we have the overlaps and the side laps so let's go to the other question so explain how the overlapping pairs are obtained so uh, we can do either of these two so the crab this is where the camera is not oriented in the actual flight direction then you have the drift where the pilots failure to fly along the uh, flight line uh, may cause so this can be caused by the wind uh, or partially by the human error so these are the two ways in which you can uh, we can obtain uh, our overlaps i'm sure there are many other make sure you research on that too so let's go to the question so here we have a question a calculation question uh calculate the number of exposures required in one strip of uh, 11 kilometer length of the scale so here we have been given the scale in ratio so this is one into uh 4800 and the photographs uh so this is the length of the photograph that is 230 meters square so in such a calculation you make sure you know what you are doing and uh, we can go directly so the solution the number of photos uh, per flight will depend upon the total length of the flight line and it is given by the length of that line divided by the airbase so you remember that uh, here we have a simple solution so the number of photos per flight line is equals to the length of the flight strip over the uh, this capital b plus one so we will tackle 
uh, will know uh, what is represented here and what is not represented here so uh, we can go directly and we see what we have here so first of all i want you to know this concept so if the end lap is 60 percent the portion not overlap is 40 percent so you remember this 60 percent we had that uh they are on top so there is something that we have there so the amount of end lap is normally 60 percent so remember that the amount of end lap is normally 60 percent having noticed that uh we can go ahead so the number of photographs uh in one strip for any given scale of photography can be derived um by uh, those simple formulas so because the air base that is capital b can be calculated so this is the air base and it can be calculated so first of all scale uh, that is s is equals to photo distance over the ground distance so our scale is in ratio uh, in an easy presentation i like just to write one over uh, 4800 is equals to the photo distance that we had here on our question over the ground distance so here i'm calculating the ground distance so this is just a simple cross multiplication after doing that i'll have my answer in millimeters so having that answer in millimeters i'll make sure to convert it into meters for easy calculation so that is one million one hundred and four thousand millimeters so that converted into meters and uh, that will be uh, one thousand one hundred and four meters so therefore the ground coverage per camera exposure is uh that is one thousand one hundred and four meters multiplied by one thousand one hundred and four meters so having been done so for this this the uh photo photo distance here so for the 230 millimeter by 230 millimeter square photo that we had been given there on the equation so first of all we'll have to calculate uh the photo base so our photo base represented by the small d will be equal to so this 40 percent so 40 over 100 and this 40 percent that was the uh area that was not overlapped so that's where our photo base is so the area that was not overlapped so the, our area that had an, an end lap that was 60 percent as earlier i had shown you so this 40 percent multiplied by the uh distance of the photo and here we'll get our answer so our photo base will be 92 millimeters so having done that we go ahead so our air base represented by the capital b here is equals to the photo base multiplied by h that is the flying uh that is the our flying height over the f and the flying height over the f uh that is the same so our scale our formula for finding the scale is equals to uh our flying height over our focal length so remember that because here in this question we don't have these two but we have a representation of our scale already given in the question so our scale will represent all these two uh data in our calculation so having noticed that i come here directly so our formula for finding so air base is equals to uh, this photo base already calculated here so our photo base is 92 over 
so by representation of these two so that is the scale so by uh, that representation our answer will be simply just like uh, this so over uh, the ratio of the scale so you can work it simple like this you can remove and you can change one or two here and there so by multiplication of these two so our scale represented here so this will be our scale multiplied by the photo base so we'll multiply these two so 92 multiplied by uh, 4800 our answer will be in millimeters then we convert that into meters getting 441.6 meters so that is the air base that we are calculating uh, after getting the air base our uh, formula earlier so the number of photos per the flight line is equals to the length of flight strip over the air base plus one so we are adding that one uh, because uh, one photo is usually added to that number to ensure the end coverage so this one is to make sure our end coverage is uh, well so the length of the flight strip we had been given that with the question that is 11 kilometers over our um, this is the photo air base our air base capital B uh, calculated here uh, that will be 441.6 meters uh, by the way so these meters this in kilometers remember that so plus one having divided that we'll get our answers 25.906 so that will be 25 photos that will be there on our uh, flight line so the number of photos there will be 25 uh, so we go to our next uh, question they needed us to calculate the number of flights that was supposed to uh, be covered there so computing flight line spacing uh, we have been given the scale the photo dimension and the side slabs lap so you remember that so the total number of flight lines can be calculated by the following equation the number of flight line is equals to the width of land over our w plus one so this w that is the distance on the ground that was covered between those uh, two parallel flights you will remember that uh, we'll do that uh, and then this is another thing so if the side slab is 30 percent then the portion not overlapped is 70 percent and this concept uh, i had discussed it earlier so um, in the side slab here it is normally held in approximately 30 percent so our side slab is also is always held approximately at 30 percent so the portion not overlapped is 70 percent and that is what we are going to be using so scale is equals to photo distance over ground distance we have been given the scale uh, we have been given the photo distance in the uh, question we are looking for the ground distance that remains the same just like our previous question so that will be one million one hundred and four thousand millimeters that will be converted into meters in order for us to have a simple thing so therefore the ground coverage per camera exposure will be the same just like that where we had calculated earlier so this one thousand one hundred and four meters multiplied by one thousand one hundred and four uh, meters so that will be our coverage there after doing that so for the uh, photo distance so it is there is a square photo given to us there on the question so that is to 30 millimeter by to 30 millimeter so the lateral portion on the photo not covered that is w 
uh, that will be 70 percent uh, multiplied by the uh, photo distance there so 70 percent of this will be 161 millimeters so that will be our small w there so the spacing between the adjacent flight lines capital w also represented by the corresponding distance to the ground this capital w is equals to so that will be the is equals to the lateral portion on the photo not overlapped small w uh, multiplied by h over f just like we had done earlier so, so uh, photo scale is equals to uh, that this flying distance over the focal length here in our question we have not been given this two so by not giving us those two i'll have my simple formulas so w is equals to the photo scale multiplied by our lateral portion on the photo not overlap the small w so that will be represented in this way so that means i'll just multiply directly 161 multiplied by uh 4800 millimeter getting my answer as 772 and 800 millimeter converting it into meters i'll get my answers 772.8 meters so this is the uh the space between the adjacent flight line or the corresponding distance to the ground so this is the w that we are going to be using here so the number of light lines is equals to the width of land over the uh, corresponding distance to the ground the capital w plus one so that is make sure the side uh, lap is well taken care of so the width of the land we had been given in the question as five kilometers over the uh, corresponding distance to the ground the capital w calculated here so 772.8 meters adding one to it so after doing that i'll get my answer as 7.47 uh, that is seven flights that will be needed in order for us to cover uh, that area having finished that so those calculations were just simple like that we go to the last question so we have been asked to name the type of mosaics so mosaics uh this is a series of overlapping photographs uh, which are trimmed and joined to form one continuous picture of a terrain just like what you are seeing here so we are continuing so you can see here at the uh at the and end laps so we have joined that in order for us to form one continuous so aerial mosaic prepared from prints of the original negative generally fall into the classes control so these are semi-controlled or and uncontrolled so mosaic can be categorized based on their uses in this classification they are index mosaic so that is photo index and strip mosaic so those were the answers they needed so the index mosaic and the strip mosaic so mosaic are, are prepared manually from the paper prints digital uh, and also digitally from the digital images that may be also produced in quantity from the original negatives so these negatives Ah, were those films that were used long time ago uh, when taking photographs so you make sure you do more research on uh, mosaic so this is just a simple uh, explanation and simple concept uh, that you can use in order to make sure you do uh, the right thing so thank you